Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me. Well, today what I'm actually going to talk about is the topic of unity, but in connection to what it means to encourage unity in the ummah through the use of the pen. This is something that's very close to my heart. And I feel like there are so many different avenues that we can use to encourage unity amongst ourselves. And I personally and other writers, you know, have the ability to encourage this very important goal through the use of, of the, the pen itself. And one of the, what, what that means to me personally is that I will look at the Quran and look at the Sunnah and look at how can I tell a story in a way that allows it to reach the hearts of the, of the believer or even anyone who's reading it actually, but for the believer in particular, one of the things that I really uh, find important is to kind of frame life in a way that we can learn lessons. And one of the lessons that I, that I seek to share through, through my writing is the, the importance of understanding that we all struggle and also understanding that no matter what we are struggling with, we can still be united. And that is something that, that I want to talk about today. And I will just share a couple of points that I, that I use in my writing that I use through storytelling to make this point. And w one of the points that I, that I make in my stories, and I think that telling the story itself is actually a way of bringing out this particular point is that differences should not mean division. So what do I, what do I mean by this? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we know that we, we have a lot of struggles going on in the Ummah, and one of the things that happens is, is sometimes we forget that these different different struggles that we have, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be divided. And although although having having struggles is a natural part of life, having um, different trials is a di natural part of life, we don't have to necessarily be divided. So we, sh we should strive and pray for unity of our hearts, even when our opinions differ, and when we have different approaches to our personal and spiritual lives in ways that are permissible in front of Allah. And you'll find these sorts of themes shared throughout my novels, especially like if you look at, for example, the novel Realities of Submission, if you look at the 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 novel the, the where it's like a, a a realistic story being told also in his other wife and also in hearts we lost you'll find in these particular stories in particular you'll find different themes of of, of struggle and in and, and, and potential division amongst the muslims happening in that particular story and also we also find it in my my book muslim girl so how do, what what am i doing here is that for anyone else who would like to encourage unity uh in the ummah especially through writing one of the things that i would would encourage is that to look at what the quran says about what we should be doing and then frame the human struggles and frame the different um things that you're sharing in your story based on that particular thing like for example one of the things that that I, that I think of one of the ayat uh, in the Quran is in surah al-ali imran and I use this as an inspiration for so much of what I do and I, and I pray that this is helpful tonight for everyone who is 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 joining us and who's watching so that we can be encouraged in this so what what does Allah tell us he tells us something very important أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم so this is the beginning of, of an ayah. It's a longer ayah. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the entire ayah, but I want to, um, to translate it and then jump to the end of it uh, so, so that we can understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here. So I'm going to read the, the translation of the entire ayah, but I'm only going to read uh, just a little portion of the Arabic just to save time. But for clarification, Allah is saying what has been translated to mean and hold fast 
all of you together to the rope of Allah and be not divided amongst yourselves. And remember Allah's favor on you. And this is where I stopped in the Arabic part, but I will continue with the English. For you were enemies to one another, but he joined your hearts together so that by his grace you became brethren in faith. And you were on the brink of a pit of fire and he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes his signs clear to you that you may be guided. So I want to focus on this, this particular point that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He says at the end of the, of the ayah, he says, so what this means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that when he's telling us these things in the Quran, the whole point is for God is. And I find this very important as a writer because one of the things that I do each time I write a book, especially when it's about Islam, is I say, oh Allah, help this and be a source of guidance, you know, through you, through your qadr, for those who you wish to guide and, 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 and a proof against those who will not be guided. And so what, what this is, so when I'm talking, uh, when I'm thinking about unity, excuse me, I actually think about this ayah a lot because Allah is actually calling our hearts to remember that we were enemies. So we don't, we don't want to repeat that. You know, we, we came from different lands. Some of us are Pakistani. Some of us are Egyptian. Some of us are from the Khaliji area where we're, we're, we're either, uh, Saudi or, or Kuwaiti, some, some of us are Malaysian, some, some of us are Indian, some of us are African American, some of us are white American, some of us are Latina and uh, are, are Latino and all of these different backgrounds and so on and so forth, Nigerian. And we have all of these different groups, Somali and Sudani, uh, you know, uh, Chinese and a lot is reminding us that you know, because we tend to, to unite based on our ethnic group. But when he gave us Iman, he removed this from us. And so he, he's reminding us of this to actually now hold on to the rope of Allah and don't become divided. And, and, and why is this so important? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that the example of the believers in their affection and mercy and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any lake, I'm sorry, when any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to remind us, or he is reminding us to wake up our hearts so that we can actually benefit from the, the, the reality of the believers when he says in the Quran, and this is in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ayah 10, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so he's describing that the, the believers are a united one brotherhood. And, and obviously this also includes sisterhood between the, the, the Muslims in their hearts. But the Prophet ﷺ also taught us and warned us that there are going to be some diseases that divide us. And so what I try to do in my writing is to remind our hearts to not allow ourselves when these diseases come, that to allow ourselves to give the give ourselves to it. Because we're going to have things in our hearts that we have to work on. So the Prophet ﷺ in, in a hadith in Tirmidhi, he says, there has come upon you the disease of the nations before you, envy and hatred. These are the shavers. I do not mean that they shave hair, but they shave away religious commitment. By the one in whose hand is my soul, you will not enter paradise until you believe, and you will not believe until you love one another. So let's take some action points on how can we, or, or let's just at the end, one action point, what can we do moving forward? This is something that I do for my own self, whether I'm writing or sharing something online, and that is to make this dua from the Quran. We're in Surah Hashr, Ayah 10, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is putting on the tongue of the believers, so 
So he's saying that this is what the believers say, our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith and put not in our hearts any resentment, any ghil, any sense of uh, dislike or, or injury or resentment toward those who have believed. Our Lord, you are indeed kind and merciful. And for an action point, look in Surah 59, I attend and implement this dua during these last uh, 10 nights and also for the rest of the days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us with. Thank you for inviting me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.